Well, I said uh, in my introduction to poetry that I would look at some some song lyrics that uh, rose up to the level of po being poetry, and uh, I think one of the st standout examples of that would be 1974's Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan. On this album, several things came together. Dylan's own great poetic ability with words, <coughs> his sensitivity at this time due to the fact that his marriage was breaking down with Sarah Lowndes, and uh, the fact that he had been studying painting with um, Norman Rabin in New York City, who had introduced him to a new way of considering perspective. And in Dylan's case, that meant uh, looking at narrative from multiple points of view. So you had these three things come up and occur at the same time. Great sensitivity due to his suffering because of his marriage breakup. This in itself, as he is a poet, created the wish to express himself with at the top of his form through words and Rabin's advice as his art teacher gave him a new way to consider narrative that he hadn't really used before. So all these things make this album special, I think. Let's begin by looking at the words. Early one morning the sun was shining, I was laying in bed, wondering if she'd change at all, if her hair was still red. Her folks had set our lives together, sure was going to be rough. They never did like Mama's homemade dress, Papa's bank book wasn't big enough. And I was standing on the side of the road, rain falling on my shoes, heading out for the East Coast. One knows I've paid some dues, getting through, tangled up in blue. So, in this first stanza, the artist, the poet, Dylan, whoever it is, is lying in bed, laying in bed thinking about somebody, thinking about someone he loves or loved seems a sense of, seems to be a sense of, there seems to be a sense of loss. He's thinking about her in the past tense, wondering if she'd change at all if her hair was still red. And then he reflects on their story together. Her folks have said our lives together sure was going to be rough. They never did like Mama's homemade dress. Papa's bank book wasn't big enough. And I was standing on the side of the road, rain falling on my shoes, heading out for the old East Coast. Lord knows I've paid some dues getting through, tangled up in blue. So we are kind of dropped into the situation in, in media res, as they say something we're dropped into something in the middle we are, we're not quite sure what's happening he's in bed he's thinking about some relationship that apparently is over or in the past something went wrong there is a lot of sadness suffering it seems they split up her family didn't like him and then He continues with the story. She was married when we first met, soon to be divorced. I helped her out of a jam, I guess, but I used a little too much force. We drove that car as far as we could, abandoned it up west, split up on a dark sad night, both agreeing it was best. She turned around to look at me as I was walking away. I heard her say over my shoulder, We'll meet again someday on the avenue, tangled up in blue. So, uh, 
yeah, the story continues, and she was married when they first met, although she was going to get divorced, something happened, and he helped the speaker, the poet, Dylan, whoever it is, helped her out of a jam, but somehow got it wrong too, used a little, little too much force, so always already a sense of perhaps this relationship not being right, it's, it's, it's breaking down. He used a little too a little too much force. We drove her car as far as we could, abandoned it up west, split up on a dark, sad night, both agreeing it was best. So, the splitting up, it's there is that's the sense of loss. It's the end of the relationship. It seems she turned around to look at me as I was walking away. I heard her say over my shoulder, "We'll meet again some day." on the avenue, tangled up in blue. So, he loves her, and yet, it seems they can't exist together, they can't live together, they have to split up. But she says they will meet again someday on the avenue. And then, in the next verse, the writer, the poet, Dylan, whoever it is, the protagonist, starts drifting around aimlessly in the aftermath of this great love, this profound relationship, which for some reason has gone wrong, gone wrong. I had a job in the great north woods, working as a cook for a spell, but I never did like it all that much, and one day the axe just fell. So I drifted down to New Orleans, where I lucky was to be employed, working for a while on a fishing boat right outside of Delacroix. But all the while I was alone, the past was close behind. i seen a lot of women, but she never escaped my mind that I just grew tangled up in blue. So he just he's just drifting around. I had a job in the... Northwoods working as a cook, but he didn't like it that much. And one day he lost a job, the axe just fell, drifted down to New Orleans where he got another job working on a fishing boat right outside of Delacroix. Let's not allow the Christ kind of uh, reference to pass or disciple of Christ working on a fishing boat, you know, Jesus thing about, I will, to the disciples about, I will make you, I will make you fishers of men. And, uh, so, there's some kind of Christian imagery, I think, coming in here. <coughs> so he's still drifting around, and, uh, he says, all the while I was alone, the past was close behind. So what's happened with this woman is still very close to him and always in his mind. And his life seems fairly meaningless. He's drifting around from job to job and he doesn't really care about anything. Uh, and the past was close behind. I've seen a lot of women but she never escaped my mind, and I just grew tangled up in blue. So, the past and the present becomes one, and the future doesn't seem to exist, so there is just this one point in time, the past, the present, and the future all coming together in pain and suffering on the basis of this relationship that hasn't worked. It continues, She was working in a topless place, and I stopped in for a beer. I just kept looking at the side of her face, in the spotlight so clear. And later on, when the crowd thinned out, I was just about to do the same. She was standing there in the back of my chair, said to me, Don't I know your name? I muttered something underneath my breath. She studied the lines on my face. I must admit, I felt a little uneasy when she bent down to tie the laces of my shoe. 
tangled up in blue. So here, yeah, this is where the narrative starts getting rather murky and difficult to follow. So she was working in a topless place. He's drifting around from job to job, his life seeming fairly meaningless after the end of this relationship. But who was who was working in a topless place? I don't think it's I don't think it's a woman he's obsessed with. And he stopped in for a beer. It seems like some kind of hooker working in working in a strip joint. He stops in for a beer. I just kept looking at the side of her face and the spotlight so clear. It's a spotlight, it's a stage. And later there's a crowd. Later on when the crowd thinned out, I was just about to do the same. She was standing there in the back of my chair, said to me, don't I know your name? So it seems like he recognizes her, her and yet it's not the woman he loves. She recognizes him, and yet she doesn't know him. There is... This is where the multiple narrative begins to come in and different points of view and it seems that from the one relationship now suddenly the woman who he is always thinking about suddenly becomes a representative of the f of 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 femininity of the female the, the female species so it's like, uh, or, or rather, he sees something of the person he loves in this hooker, and it's a kind of Dante-esque situation where uh, the person he loves is. Beatrice is is everywhere, and he can see her in in lots of women, and this is what he, he can see her in this hooker. He can see the the woman he lo he loves in this hooker, and the hooker, for her part, can see someone who is very sensitive and uh, someone who has suffered a lot. Again, the Christ. Christian imagery is coming into it. Uh, he's a kind of Jesus figure, someone who impresses by an infinite capacity to suffer. And just as he can see the one he loves in the, in the hooker, so the hooker can see something special in this man who has seems to have an infinite capacity to suffer. So, uh, she thinks she might know him. She, she, there is something about him that seems familiar. It is, it is his, perhaps his infinite capacity for suffering that is familiar to her. She sees it in him, it's in herself, it's everywhere, his sensitivity, it's his sensitivity. I muttered something underneath my breath, she studied the lines on my face. I must admit I felt a little uneasy when she bent down to tie the laces of my shoe, tangled up in blue. Continues with the Christ imagery like uh, Mary Magdalene washing the feet of Jesus with her hair. This is a kind of, this is probably a prostitute too, a uh, hooker. She doesn't wash his feet with her hair, but she bends down to tie the laces of his shoe. She recognizes him as, he, she recognizes him, him, she recognizes him as someone who is unique. Uh, and he, for his part, is not judgmental, like Jesus was not judgmental about Mary Magdalene. So this Christ imagery, Christian imagery, running through it all here. It continues. She lit a burner on the stove and offered me a pipe 
I thought you'd never say hello, she said. You look like the silent type. And she opened up a book of poems and handed it to me, written by an Italian poet from the 13th century. And every one of them words rang true, and glowed like burning coal, pouring off of every page, like it was written in my soul, from me to you, tangled up in blue. So it continues with the, this meeting between the Christ-like artist figure and the prostitute Mary Magdalene type figure. And uh, they both seem comfortable with each other. They both recognize something unique in the other. She lit a burner on the stove and offered me a pipe. I thought you'd never say hello, she said. You look like a silent type. Then she opened up a book of poems and offered it to me, written by an Italian poet from the 13th century. So again, does he, you feel that Dylan is referring to Dante, probably here, and uh, is Beatrice divine lady who he saw everywhere and uh, Dylan has become or the poet the wanderer has become like Dante and somehow the the hooker recognizes him for who he is and she somehow has a book of poems Italian poems which she hands to him as a sign that she has recognized who he is, the eternal seeker after truth, the Christ figure, the artist, always heading for another joint, always looking for some new truth. An Italian poet from the 13th century, I think Dante would be from the 14th century, but perhaps doesn't really matter, I don't suppose. Dylan was really bothered. I think he's probably referring to Dante here. And he says, Every one of them words, words rang true and glowed like burning coal, pouring off of every page like it was written in my soul, from me to you, tangled up in blue, from me to you, from who, from who to who, from him to the hooker or from him to the woman who he had the relationship with or from him to the eternal feminine figure. The, the reference to, to Dante is interesting because Beatrice became the eternal feminine figure for him. And it seems that for Dylan here, the, the one, the women are kind of blending into each other and becoming a kind of eternal feminine figure. So let's continue with the next stanza. I lived with them on Montague Street in a basement downstairs. There was music in the cafes at night and revolution in the air. Then he started into dealing with slaves and something inside of him died. She had to sell everything she owned and froze up inside. I waited finally the bottom fell out. I became withdrawn. The only thing I knew how to do was to keep on keeping on like a bird that flew, tangled up in blue. So, now there's an abrupt jump. I lived with them on Montague Street. Who's them? We don't know. Is it now? Is it in the past? Is it in the future? It seems that time has just come round and it's meaningless. It's meaningless to ask about the time anymore. It's sometime here, there, now, in the past, in the future. It doesn't matter. We don't know who they are. I lived with them on Montague Street in a basement down the stairs. So, very humble kind of place, suitable for a Christ-like figure. There was music in the cafes at night and revolution in the air. 
Then he started into dealing with slaves. Who's he? And what are the slaves? We don't know. And something inside of him died. She had to sell everything she owned and froze up inside. So perhaps that refers to them. Perhaps he's staying with a, a couple. Or could be that the him is a sudden change of pro pronoun and is the artist seeing himself in the third person and she could be the woman he loved or the, just the eternal feminine figure that we already saw in the hooker and when it finally the bottom fell out I became withdrawn the only thing I knew how to do was to keep on keeping on like a bird that flew tangled up in blue there's something very Sufi-esque about this from Dylan the Sufis think and thought that the soul is like a bird always moving on in flight looking for the truth, looking for God looking for its truth, its own true soul and God that can show the true soul so yeah um, the soul as a bird is a very common image in Sufi poetry so it seems that Dylan is seeing himself as a bird that flies that has to keep moving on uh, he had to keep has to keep keep on keeping on other people can stop but he can't he is an artist who has to has to suffer and has to go through uh, so many different experiences most people settle down into one or another but as an artist he has to keep going he has to ex keep experiencing new things all the time in order to get nearer to the truth in order to get nearer to the divine in order to get nearer to God and his own true nature so the last verse let's look at it so now I'm going back again I gotta get to her somehow all the people we used to know they're an illusion to me now some are mathematicians some are carpenters wives don't know how it all got started I don't know what they're doing with their lives but me I'm still on the road heading for another joint we always did feel the same we just saw it from a different point of view tangled up in blue hmm, so yes everything changing here too the narrative point of view possibly the pronouns so now I'm going back again I got to get to her somehow to who? To, to, to the one from the beginning who he had the relationship with that failed? Does he have to get back to her or is it more about having to get back to the eternal feminine? He's always on the move looking for, for some new experience. All the people we used to know, who is we, him and, him and the girl he's talking about, the one he had the relationship with? We can't be sure, but probably all the people we used to know, they're an illusion to me now. Some are mathematicians. Well, that's interesting. It doesn't sound like they would be mathematicians. It sounds like they would be more simple people. But again, Dylan was always ready to throw a spanner into the works. Some are mathematicians, some are carpenters' wives, so you have both extremes, so the intellectual and the simple the mathematician and the carpenter's wives I don't know how it all got started I don't know what they're doing with their lives so everybody else is an illusion to him he's keeping going and trying to find his truth through looking for the eternal feminine by trying to get back to this woman he had the relationship with He's, he's trying, by drifting around, he's trying to be like a bird that keeps on keeping on, keeps moving, 
from joint to joint. He's got to find the truth. He's got to understand his own true nature. He's like a bird that flew, like a Sufi that, that is trying to find God. Other people settle down. The poet, the artist can't do that. But me, I'm still on the road, I'm heading for another joint. We always did feel the same. We just saw it from a different point of view, tangled up in blue. Well, he's on the road and he will stay on the railroad. He's heading for another joint. We always did feel the same. Who? Him and the and the, the woman he's talking about from the beginning, presumably. We just saw it from a different point of view. So there will always be soulmates, but perhaps they can't relate together, live together for any longer because they, they have a different point of view of view, but basically they are the same, they see things in the same way, so from the search for the eternal feminine, he comes, seems to come back into the, at the end, to his own personal loss, which is the loss of his own marriage with Sir Lowndes at this time, so it seems very confessional, this, this last part, saying that uh, yeah, they they're the same, they will always love each other, they always understand each other, but they reach the point where everything, they just, everything seemed difficult because they were seeing things from different point of view, but they always did and will feel the same. So in this last part, I think you have direct reference to Dylan's own marital loss at this time. All in all, it's a, it's a great tour de force and a wonderful poem full of enigmas, full of imagery which is startling and archetypes which someone like Young would have appreciated the, 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 the Christian references, the Dante, Beatrice references, the Italian poet references, the Sufi references, the wandering poet, poet like a bird references and uh, it all comes together into the most wonderful artistic whole and although Dylan has written some great poems in his song lyrics I honestly believe that this is the best of all 